The rotary kiln is the heart of the cement manufacturing process and the most important machinery in a cement plant. Any downtime of the kiln adversely affects the production, process efficiency, product quality, and profitability. Rotary kilns are a valuable asset with high return on investment and the potential to have a long productive life with proper maintenance. The maintenance of the rotary kiln tends to be expensive, mainly due to the cost of consequential loss of production. Hot kiln alignment is a process of measurement and adjustment kiln parts to result in optimum setting of the kiln geometry, tires, rollers and etc. And that to attain the best productivity of the kiln. Hot or dynamic kiln alignment is an elixir and remedy to the plethora of cost associated with the consequential loss of production. As it is carried out during normal kiln operation, the alignment of the rotary kiln plays a very crucial role in determining the plant availability, thereby increasing production, reducing operating cost, and increasing profits. Proper measurement readings is a key component in any kiln alignment. In this video, we will focus on the kiln measurements, which allow a full diagnosis of the kiln's problems, so the plant will have complete mechanical information of the equipment. By this way, knowing the exact scenario and the best decisions for a better equipment behavior can be made. According to the results of the measurements and the mechanical condition of the equipment, kiln adjustment activities can be started to align it and to achieve the best conditions for improving the lifetime and availability of the equipment. Inclinometer is a measurement tool which measures the axle inclinations of slow rotating parts during operation. It measures deviations in vertical direction, with a high accuracy, which makes the alignment work much easier. Kiln on a slope, will tend to move downhill as it turns. That downward movement is resisted by both, the friction force between rollers and tires, and by the force on the thrust roller. When a kiln roller is not exactly parallel to the kiln axis, it imparts an axle thrust force to the kiln. The direction of this force depends on how the roller is skewed, and on the direction of kiln rotation. Just like horizontal skewing, vertical skewing of a roller will also create a thrust force. Slope differences between tire and rollers cause conical wear on both surfaces and wear on shaft and bed because of unequal loads. The girth gear and pinion must work harder to rotate the kiln. Deviations in the inclination of the girth gear and pinion create a high edge load on tooth. The negative effect is not only higher power consumption but mainly faster wear of drive component, and damage on the components. Place the inclinometer always, as close as possible to the center of rotation in order to minimize, the negative impact of centrifugal forces. On kiln tires and girth gears, the sensor cannot be attached in the center of rotation, in such case, Place the inclinometer onto the side face of the rollers, tires, or girth gears. The surfaces have not to be straight, nor machined, but magnetizable, and clean enough, that the magnets apply sufficient force to avoid the tools of falling off, or shifting during the measurement. Out of experience, Inclination deviation of less than 0.5 mm per meter is an acceptable limit of vertical deviation between tires and support rollers, or between kiln girth gears and pinions. 
if the inclination deviation between tires and rollers, or, between girth gears and pinions, is more than 0.8 mm per meter. Action must be taken for realignment. Ovality sensor is a measurement tool for rotary kilns, which measures the changes of the curvature in the kiln shell during operation. This elastic deformation is called ovality and is primarily present in the area of the kiln tire. The measurement gives accurate information about the degree of mechanical loads and stresses in the refractory and kiln shell. Thus, Fact-based decisions can be made for the required planned maintenance activities, leading to increased lifetime, not only of the refractory, but also kiln components. To start a new measurement, mark the kiln shell with three measurement positions, A, B, and C. Place the ovality sensor during normal operation onto the kiln shell, at the marked position, to start the measurement, select the position, to measure in the kiln schematic, the measurement will be taken, after the tool reaches the top point, the measured points, are displayed continuously, until the tool reaches the second time to the top point. The low ovality values gives an indication of normal flattening on top moderate and symmetrical deflection at contact with support rollers. High ovality value is a sign of strong flattening on top and gives an indication for high relative movement. In this case, the tire shimming seems to be required. Top area tilt is an indication of scuffing between the tire inner diameter and the tire plates. Inconsistent readings, or jumps in the graph, is an indication for loss of contact between one of the middle magnets, to the kiln shell, and, might also be indications for insufficient hold of the magnets. In this case, make sure that, the magnets are clean, and there is not excessive dust, or, corrosion on the kiln shell. There is no fixed guideline about the acceptable ovality values or limits. The allowed ovality limits have to be discussed with the refractory suppliers and adjusted accordingly. This figure can be taken as an example of typical ovality value limits, but might need to be adjusted to the specific case. If your ovality value in this region, search the root cause of high ovality, such as, excessive wear of tire pads, high relative movement, overload due to vertical, misalignment of kiln axis, or, cyclic overload, due to crank in kiln shell. This region ovality, is excellent for the refractory, but, closely monitoring are, required, for the relative movement of the tire. Here, in the low ovality values region, search the root cause of a very low ovality, such as, wrong tire, shimming, high shell temperature, or upset kiln condition. The ovality values are good, and simple indicators to see, whether other investigations, or measurements are required. Bear in mind, that, the corrective actions on the kiln should never and never be based only on the results of the ovality measurement. Ovality measurement does not replace creep measurement nor measurement of the kiln axis. The measuring wheel is a measurement tool which measures the diameter of slow rotating cylinders such as, support rollers or tires on rotary kilns. These components, are typically subject to a certain amount of wear, and have to be remachined, or replaced after some time of operation.
In order to keep the kiln axis aligned, it is essential to know the changes of the diameters, and, to compensate them by adjusting the roller positions. By measuring the diameter at various positions, along the width of a support roller or tire, its cylindricity gets known, which helps to define the corrective action in case of deviations. The measuring wheel kit consists of three main components, the wheel itself with the integrated rotation encoder, the heat-resistant light barrier sensor to indicate the rotation of the item to be measured, and the controller which calculates and displays the diameter. During each wheel revolution, electrical impulses are sent to the wheel controller, which is counting them. Attached to the side face of the support roller or tire, the light barrier sensor provides each revolution an electrical impulse to the wheel controller. This revolution impulse starts the counting of the impulses coming from the wheel encoder after one revolution of the support roller or tire, a new impulse from the barrier sensor is stopping the counting. The diameter value is displayed, and immediately the next measuring cycle is started. The target is to have cylindrical surfaces. However, slight deviation can often be found, which are not necessarily always harmful. The impact on the surfaces which are rolling on each other, is mainly defined by the fact, how good they fit together. Finally, measuring the diameters of kiln tires and rollers, and the variation of the diameter, along the width of the surfaces, gives a visualization, of how the surfaces of, the tires and rollers, are matching to each other, which will help, in the kiln alignment. Since the kiln shell is set on a slope, gravity pulls it downhill, and therefore, something must control the axle position. Typically, this is the job of the thrust rollers. The skew of the carrying rollers can also counteract this gravity pull. Often, rotating equipment is economically built with light thrust rollers that need help from the carrying roller skew to keep the drum from pushing downhill too hard. Hydraulic thrust rollers run on rails, and are powered by hydraulic arms, to move the entire kiln axially. They are designed to carry 100% of the thrust load of the kiln, allowing the carrying rollers to be adjusted to neutral skew. Skew is the position of the roller axle, with respect to turning axis of the shell. If they are parallel, then the roller is said to have zero skew, or, be neutral. Zero skew means no axle thrust is created. If the roller is not parallel, then it is said to be skewed, or cut, and does create an axle thrust. That pushes the kill neither uphill or downhill. Setting the drum to float the thrust riding ring between the upper and lower thrust rollers, maintains even riding ring to roller wear, minimize the load on the thrust rollers, and lowers bearing temperature. Thrust control by skewing, may be the single most important adjustment, which influences the optimum mechanical operation of the unit and need a special care in measuring the roller's position with respect to the tires. The measurement can be accomplished by using dial indicator, laser equipped with levels, or, by using inductive or thrust sensor, which attaches to one of the two bearings supporting the roller shaft, and, 
send signals indicating the exact amount and direction of any thrust developed as a result of rotation. The sensors must be mounted on the bearing with the fixing ring, which is usually mounted in the downhill bearing. Excessive skewing and wrong skewing of rollers may create heavy thrust reaction on the bearings and at times vibrations, which are detrimental to the refractory lining life. Measure the support rollers and adjust them to provide a straight kiln axle. Minimize the axle thrust of the kiln on the trust rollers and to minimize the individual thrust of each support roller bearing. These are the correct positions of rollers for a kiln that turns counterclockwise. And these are the correct positions of rollers for a clockwise turning kiln. Usually, deformations in the kiln shell or tire wobbling generates unnecessary and excessive forces on the rollers, reducing its service life and even causing roller shafts cracks and hot bearings. This means high reparation costs and high expenses in terms of production loss caused by kilns and scheduled shutdowns. If a kiln has a bent axis, a condition commonly referred to as a dogleg, the load on an affected pier will vary as the kiln rotates. If the magnitude of the pier load variation exceeds the roller shaft fatigue limit, shaft failure will result. The effects of the pier load variation on the support rollers can be determined by measuring the bending of the roller shafts as the kiln rotates. On a kiln support roller, the variation of the deflection of the roller shafts show possible cranks in the kiln shell. Cranks are straighteners errors in the kiln shell, which are affecting the loads on the roller stations with each kiln revolution. There are two types of cranks. The first type is permanent or mechanical crank, which cause by plastic deformations in the kiln shell, or errors during the kiln construction. The second type is thermal crank, which cause by uneven temperature distribution, or thermal expansion around the kiln shell circumference, which most severe close to the middle tire. The load changes caused by cranks can be very strong and overload the tires and rollers which results in cracks in tires, rollers and roller shafts. To measure the effects of a crank, the inductive sensor is placed under the support roller in the line of force. That means on the opposite side of the contact to the kiln tire. After starting the measurement, the values will appear on the computer screen. To detect a crank on a three-station kiln, measuring the roller shaft bending on the middle station is normally sufficient, and both rollers of a station should deflect in the same way. Nevertheless, it is recommended to measure both rollers on the middle station to double-check the result. Thermal cranks occur randomly. In case of indication for a permanent crank, it is recommended to perform the roller shaft bending measurement in cold kiln condition also to be sure that there is no thermal effect taking place. After about three kiln revolutions, sufficient data will be collected and the measurement can be stopped. A yellow line in the graph shows the position of the reference point. The green curve shows the measured values. The blue curve is sinusoidal and shows the variation of roller shaft bending coming from a crank in the kiln shell. The red curve indicates the roundness of the support roller and is the difference between the measured curve and the shaft bending curve. The limits of roller shaft bending decide according to the equipment manual. 
or by discussion with the suppliers. Nevertheless, based on the experience of different kiln supplier, if the bending of a shaft exceeds 0.015 inch, corrective procedures are necessary to prevent future roller shaft failure. Most rotary kilns are driven by open gear drives, which include pinion and girth care. Due to difficulties during the installation, or later during the operation, the girth gears might do not run concentrically nor straight. The so-called axle and radial runout can be measured during normal operation to find the runout of the girth drive. Radial runout results in a change of center distance and affects the tooth engagement. Axle runout affects the load distribution over the tooth width. The radial runout is measured on the tip of the teeth, while the axle runout is measured on machine side face of the girth gear or on the side face of the teeth. The measurement results for radial runout provide the following readings. Eccentricity which is the distance between the center of rotation and the center of the girth care, and shows how much the girth gear is out of the center of rotation. Peak at, which indicates the angle where the peak of the eccentricity is located. Roundness deviation, which shows a maximal deviation from the ideal circle. And finally, the total run out which is the combination of eccentricity with roundness deviation. In measuring the axle run out, the results give values of wobbling, which shows how much the girth gear is not perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Peak at, which indicates the angle where the peak of the wobble is located. Straightness deviation which shows a maximal deviation from the ideal plane surface. And total run out, which is the combination of wobbling with straightness deviation. Girth gear should be checked for axle and radial run out at regular interval, to suit the plant shutdown schedule, and when there is a possibility that the alignment might have been affected by shell deformation, or other reasons. The acceptable run-out limits of girth gear has to be according the equipment manual or discussed with the suppliers about how much run-out and roundness error can be allowed. From experience, and as an example, the acceptable limits for axle and radial run-outs for used girth gear with the 6 meters pitch circle diameter is 1 millimeter and 1.4 millimeter respectively. Backlash, pitch line separation, and root clearance should also be periodically inspected and corrected. Whenever required, the contact area of girth gear and pinion teeth should be maintained between 70 and 80%. Extended life of girth gear and pinion, the runouts, and the root clearance should not exceed the acceptable limits. When the results readings show excessive limits, the girth gear should be realigned. Tires are mounted loosely on the shell, to allow for the different rates of thermal expansion of the tire and shell. As a result, the tire will have circumferential movement relative to the shell. This is referred to as creep or slip. The tires creep, even if kiln is aligned correctly, creating higher wear of components, like stop blocks, chair pads, rollers, tires, and shell. The problem appears especially when migration is both too high and too low. 
Measuring kilns tires migration by using a Borg method gives us information about shell vertical deformation as well as relative movement. The relative movement is the only value to use to determine how much to shim. Tires wobbling might be caused by deformation of kiln shell, wear out of shims, or wear out of kiln tire in a surface. The most common cases, an effect of the combination of those parameters, excess axle wobbling, has negative consequences on supporting rollers. In extreme cases, the wobbling might cause the appearance of a gap. Between tire and rollers, the gap changes its location following tire movement, and causing an uneven load on bearings. Furthermore, the contact of the tire with the roller, has a limited surface. What causes? A drastic increase of Hertz pressure. Axle run out can be measured by either inductive sensors or dial indicators. The measurement describes the amount of axle movement at the point on shell circumference that has the maximum values. Exceeded tolerance for axle run out very often is a symptom of crank's presence, running through a specific support, that is, crankshaft. The axle runout tolerance, for newly installed tires in cold condition, is, 0.00013, multiplied by, the diameter. Shell of rotary kilns is operating in high temperatures. In case of excessive heat, the shell might deform or deflect. High value of local deformations can cause problems with kilns internal refractory lining, which has a negative impact on its lifetime. Moreover, any type of alignment deviation to the shell, transfer very high forces to other kiln components and causing their gradual and faster wear. Kiln shell laser is a measurement tool, which measures the deformations in rotary kilns during operation. The tool can be used to measure, just one cross section. A specific area containing a few cross sections of interest, or the whole kiln to get the full picture. To measure the shape of the shell, the kiln shell laser is placed along the rotating kiln and measures continuously the distance to the shell surface. Deformations for each measured position generate and appear as a graph. Several measurements along the kiln can be combined into a full three-dimensional graph. The three-dimensional graph shows the severity of the deformations in different colors which are a great help to identify the areas where special attention to the refractory is required. In case of reduced refractory lifetime due to shell deformation, the sensor helps to decide which shell sections need to be replaced. The more cross sections are measured, the more detailed becomes the picture of the kiln, but there are some areas need to be focused on in measuring the shell deformation. The areas of refractory failures to check if a roundness deviation in the shell is the root cause or not. The areas of kiln inlet and outlet to know the impact on the seals. The areas of kiln tires to see the impact of the shell deformations on the tire wobbling to understand their correlation and to identify the location of possible correction cuts. The areas where shell sections need to be replaced, to find a good locations with low runout, where new shell pieces easily can be connected. And the areas of the girth gear, in case of a replacement of the gear, if the shell needs to be replaced as well. To get a clear picture about the deformation in the kiln shell, 
there are ways to display the data in three-dimensional. The simple way is the topography view, which is good for static analysis and printouts. The much more powerful tool is the three-dimensional modeling of Kiln. It is animated, and shows the center line with its eccentricity, and can combine the shell deformation readings with other measurement results. The deformations are exaggerated to make them visible on the computer screen. There are different possibilities to visualize the deformations. Amplitude. Which shows the height of the deformations in different colors. Grid. Which displays the grid lines but hides the shell surface. And curvature. Which shows the steepness of the deformations in the kiln shell. In other words, it shows how much the straightness and the roundness are changing within a specific area. Or how abrupt the deformations are. Abrupt or sudden changes in the shape have a negative impact on the lifetime of the refractory bricks. To get a more realistic view. And for better understanding, the runout of kiln piers and girth gear can be added, and measured, by the help of the inductive distance sensor, and displayed in three-dimensional model also. By bringing the kiln here into orthogonal position, you can see easily that, the kiln is not straight, and has a high eccentricity at kiln in letters showing here in the blue center line. The experience on refractory light has shown clearly that, a good roundness of the kiln shell is the key. Whereas the impact of eccentricity can be neglected, just the pure amplitude of deformations in a kiln shell, does also not give sufficient information about the situation. The smoothness and sharpness of deformations is to be considered, a smooth deformation, even with high amplitude might still allow the proper installation of refractory, whereas, an abrupt change of curvature typically reduces the refractory lifetime drastically. There are no fixed values or limits about, the acceptable deformation for the refractory lining, but from experience, and as a guideline, if the shell deformation is less than the deformation length divided by 300, it can be accepted a smooth shell deformation. If the deformation is more than the deformation length divided by 300, and less than the deformation length divided by 100, keep the lifetimes of the refractory lining under observation. And finally, if the deformation is more than the deformation length divided by 100, this deformation can be considered as a sharp shell deformation which has a high impact on the kiln refractory lining. Hot kiln alignment has come a long way in the recent past, making alignments faster and more precise than ever before. Routine inspections and ray alignment should be a part of the regular maintenance program, in order to keep the kiln running efficiently for years to come. The regular kiln equipment inspection guarantee long and trouble-free kiln service life. Kiln alignment and dynamic, or hot conditions, offer s precision results in significantly less time, with greatly reduced potential for errors.